I'll be looking out for the slides, so just give me a nudge when you want me to move it on to the next one for you. Over to you, gentlemen. OK, thanks, Donovan. So um, just do a quick introduction of ourselves. Um, so I'm Alex Bond. Uh, as Donovan said, I'm, I'm the chair of the CPD Assessment Committee for my sins. Um, but I've been an active volunteer with the IMECI for, for over 20 years now. Um, I started off in, in the regional committee structure, taking on various roles uh, and became chair of Thamesway Region. Uh, currently, I am the regional education officer, which brings me into the um, education committee groupings. Um, uh, and also as, as uh, CPD chair, I sit on the qualifications and membership board, and I'll talk a bit more about the various structures within IMECI uh, um, as we go through. I also volunteer outside of the IMECI, and I'm a school governor uh, at a local secondary school, and I'm also a STEM ambassador. John, do you want to do a quick run through? Yeah, now? yeah, I've um, I've been volunteering with the IMEC now for perhaps six years. Started off as a professional professional review interviewer. Um, was uh, one of the lucky ones who got picked up in 2017 in the first CPD um, audit. And as a result of that, I volunteered as an assessor and then joined the committee and uh, became vice, vice chair uh, earlier this year. Thanks, John. Um, so what are we going to look at today? The objective is to, to run through and see how volunteering, both within the institution uh, and without the institution, how that will contribute to, to your annual CPD record. Um, in order to do that, we, we'll set the scene and, and just run through what, what CPD is and, and why we need to do it. And we'll talk about the different opportunities for, for volunteering. Um, and unashamedly, I'll do it in the context of the CPD Assessment Committee. Um, so, so looking at the roles of assessors and committee members. And, and then we'll go through and, and talk about um, what we, John and myself, get out of being a volunteer uh, and how it contributes to our CPD. So, so bring the personal element into it. So what is CPD? Well, Rob Smith, who is um, an IMECI member, as you can see there, and he's also um, Engineering Council board member with uh, a remit on, on CPD, uh, described it very accurately as the, the mechanism by which we as professional engineers maintain and extend our competence. And if you move us on to the next slide. Um, so what is CPD? It really is anything that, that will, will enhance knowledge. Um, and as such, it is fairly closely aligned to the core comp competencies uh, which underpin registration. So, so any of these aspects will, will contribute to, to CPD. And if we move to the next one, So this is, uh, anyone know what, well, I can't ask the question, I suppose, because we can't get voice, but but uh, the, the picture that we're looking at here is, is the world's first mouse, the, the wooden block. Um, uh, and that first came to the market in 1973, so, so just about 50 years ago. So that is one one career's worth uh, of, of development. And we've gone for, from never having seen a mouse before to, to now when we are all using mice every single day of the week. Um, and, and things have moved on. We've now got trackballs. We've now got uh, eyeball retina tracking. We've got uh, remote tracing with, with laser um, tomography. Um, so, so even the mouse has now, now evolved. Um, and and it, it seems only logical that as a profession, we would expect our, our knowledge to be maintained up to date. Let's face it, we wouldn't feel particularly comfortable going on a plane uh, to be told that our pilot 
did his training on a, a Boeing 707. And it's all OK because the laws of, of aerodynamics haven't changed. Well, no, they haven't. But but what you need to know has. Um, and, and that's why we, we ask for people to do CPD. The vast majority of, of the professions require CPD and engineering is no exception. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, we are in a position, most of us, where, where if we get things wrong, we kill tens, if not hundreds of people in one go. So why wouldn't you keep your skills up to date? If we move on, please. Um, so what does IMECI require us to do as engineers uh, and registrants? Um, essentially, we have asked all the way through that, that engineers, pro professionally active members, take reasonable steps to maintain appropriate professional competencies by undertaking, recording and providing evidence of suitable CPD activity. And we have always said that failure to do so may result in sanctions under the appropriate regulations. So there has always been an expectation that people would maintain their, their competency. Um, that will be picked up in a second, I have no doubt. Um, uh, so uh, what we expect from that I I is that people um, maintain a, a, a record uh, of some form uh, of what activity they, they've been undertaking. Uh, and if we move on, please, Donovan. So. Although we've always been required to, to maintain our CPD records, there has been a series of recent changes that have come into play. Back in September 2013, the Engineering Council um, issued a new CPD code and policy, which became uh, and is embedded within um, the, the UK Spec 4 requirements. And this now sets out very clearly the obligations on both the individual and on the professional engineering institutions, the PEIs. And as of January 2017, these obligations on the PEIs became mandatory. And as such, we are now required as an institution to monitor uh, registrant CPD activity. We are asked to provide appropriate feedback on, on people's CPD records and, and take a random sample audit in each year. Uh, and indeed, we, we started that process back in 2017 uh, and a large number of people have been um, called to, to audit over that time. Um, we typically take uh, an audit of around 5% of the, the membership, so two and a half thousand each year. And since then, 2019 is when um, it became absolutely mandatory that, that everyone does their CPD recording. And we, from that point onwards, were in a position where we needed to apply sanctions to anyone who failed to engage in the process of the audit. To that end, we had to um, adjust the, the bylaws and the regulations to make sure that uh, it was clear to all that failure to, to maintain CPD records would result in uh, the sanctions. And, and ultimately, the sanctions are that uh, people will lose their, their registration with the Engineering Council uh, on, on the basis of failing to engage with the audit process. If we move on, please, Donovan. So this is where I hand over to, to John, please. John? John, you're currently showing as being muted, if you can. Well, please. Apologies. Ah, got you. Yes. Over to you, John. Yeah. So CPD, um, 
a lot of people worry about it, but um, the, this learning model shows us that um, the majority of our development and learning occurs on the job from experience. Um, and that, that experience can also be outside of, of work, of course. Um, so that is what it is. It isn't all about formal courses and formal qualifications. Um, that has a part to play, but it's relatively small. Uh, and, and the other area, which um, again, is learning from others. So, you know, listening to other people, sharing ideas, discussing problems with other people can all be good CPD. If, if it's related to our development as a professional engineer, then it, it, and it is helping us on our journey to develop, then it is CPD. So if we move on, what the IMACE approach to CPD is very much based on you as an individual uh, and reflective learning. So it's about what are your career, uh, what are your professional aspirations and what do you need to do in terms of developing your skills and competence, your experience and your knowledge in order to realise those skills. Um, so it is very focused and tailored to you as an individual. So as I said, it does not just be for, uh, have to be formal training. The IMICI has set no minimum requirement for your CPD. It's what's appropriate for you at, your, at the stage of the career uh, that you're at. And it's about reflective learning, not counting hours or point, a points based system. So it's about what have you got out of your CPD? What have you learned? How are you applying that? How is that helping you to develop further as a professional? And as I've said, most people are doing CPD without realising it. You know, when you're looking at catalogues of uh, suppliers, catalogues for, for, for components to, uh, or, or to go into your system, that can be CPD. It's research. It is relevant to your professional development. It's CPD. So yes, it's part and parcel of the day job uh, for a lot of people. If we move on to look at the CPD cycle, it, it's really a loop where you identify the requirement, what is your need, what are your short and long term goals, what do you need in order to achieve them, then it's a plan, what activities do you need to undertake in order to achieve, uh, uh, to develop those skills and knowledge, just then get on and do it, and then importantly record it, uh, keep a record um and review on it um and then and that feeds back into the identification cycle and it's a repetitive post process um experience from the cpd reviews I, I i've seen would suggest that it's a good idea to set aside some time to focus on your cpd on a quarterly basis and that's particularly helpful in identifying what you've learned on the job if you wait for um, the end of the year or a request for your record because you, you're one of the lucky 5%, then you'll forget an awful lot of what you did in the early part of the year. So, so uh, moving on to the next slide, there's some examples of CPD there, and uh, you, you can read that, but volunteering um, is an important area for, for CPD. It can develop your interpersonal skills. It can lead you to develop technical knowledge in particular areas of relevance. It can develop your management and business skills. And I think that's an important point to remember as well. If we go back to the, um, the five competence areas, it isn't just about your technical knowledge and your technical skills. It's about what do you need to be effective as a professional engineer. So leadership comes into that. Your ability to communicate, your ability to get on with people, um, management of people, leading projects and so on. 
it all counts and um your commitment to the to the profession um and support to the profession uh uk spec competence c that's one area which again can can be overlooked but volunteering can play an important role there so what do we mean by reflective learning on the next slide donovan please as I say, this forms the core of the IMECI approach to CPD. And it's really answering these questions. Did I benefit from the activity? How did I benefit? How could I have benefited more? You know, was it a good approach for me or would a different approach work better? And that can be useful to guide your selection of future CPD activity. If you've looked at something and it doesn't work for you, why waste your time repeating it if there are alternatives available? And how are you going to use what you've learned constructively and further build on it? And I think the other thing I want to say here as well about um, reflecting, it's not just about identifying areas of weakness, it can, uh, in identifying areas of strength that you can build on can be just as valuable and just as important. So it's about looking back and thinking critically about what you've done and, the, uh, and what you've learned, and then looking forward and thinking strategically about how you can apply it. OK, so the annual CPD audit. Next slide, uh, Donovan. In fact, um, we've gone slightly out. OK, so the audit cycle, uh, stage one, 5% um, of the membership uh, will be approached annually um, and asked to submit their record for the previous year um, in the window January to March. The assessor community will look at those and provide feedback. We aim to get it done by June, but typically it takes us through to the autumn. Um, as I say, it's looking back over the activity in the previous year, but um, very often people do include uh, activity from the start of uh, the current year, and that you know we'll look at what people su submit and comment on it. It's like touch feedback. We aim to highlight what's good good in the record, areas that have been missed, um, and just really get across to people the message what CPD is about, why it's important, and encourage them to, um, when necessary, to improve. Then we have a stage two, which is option people opt into, um, where we provide to, uh, specific feedback to their situation. So in that situation, the, the um, person requesting the feedback will submit some detailed information about themselves and about their aspirations and the assessor will then look at that and comment on the appropriateness and suggest um, how it might be improved. So next slide, some side, uh, purpose of stage one for the candidate is really just to give them encouragement about their CPD and their recording of it. So there are our assessments based on the three criteria of the amount of CPD, but we don't don't get too hung up on that. It's about what's relevant to the individual at their stage of the career, their career that they're at, um, the quality of the CPD activity, and that's really um, a lot of that comes back to what what's communicated through the reflection that's recorded. And we do definitely look for evidence of reflective practice. And again, from experience, that's often the weakest area in submissions. Uh, and we'll make suggestions about areas where the um, person being assessed might improve and provide sh a short written um, feedback statement of perhaps five, six hundred words at most. Stage two, as I said, um, is a lot more information comes from the, uh, the individual. 
Um, and it is very much about picking up, have they articulated what it is they're trying to achieve? Have they done a SWOT analysis which really does does the job of identifying what uh, or informing the identification of their development goals and then ha has the plan that they've put forward um, set out a realistic means to achieve that. Okay, and then so the role of the assessor is um, to crit critically review the submissions and provide feedback. But importantly, it's about encouraging the members to extract the most from the CPD investment. Um, and also, we look to identify areas of good practice so that we can um, provide support to uh, other people. And what we're seeking to do at the moment is put some good examples onto the website for people to look at. And if you like, you consider it as a, a mentoring role of mentoring somebody along the journey of improving their CPD practice. And I think I hand back to you now, Alex. Yeah. Um, so, so just picking up on a couple of things there. Um, so, the the audit function um, is something that we do every year, uh, and we currently have a, a body of twenty four assessors who, who support us in in doing our, our CPD assessments. Um, each year we, we're assessing around 500 submissions, um, so you can see the the sort of um, sort of engagement that that you, you sign up to uh, as an assessor, and and this is fairly typical of any of the um, committees where where there is a, a an assessment function required. So so not dissimilar to to the professional review committee. Um, you know, all, all of these bodies are doing that sort of level. Um, because we are new to the audit cycle uh, and trying to work out exactly how, how it works and, and how how the assessors um, do their assessments. Um, in, in one of the earlier slides, you saw that the, the typical or the target for, for our, our schedule through the year is such that we would complete the, the stage one audits by the end of the summer. Um, so far, since since we started the process, we have um, fundamentally failed to achieve that as as our goal. Uh, sometimes it's because the the computer systems have have let us down, but more often than not, it's uh, that we haven't qu quite got the numbers uh, of CPD assessors uh, right, and and uh, we're we're still working to to get the the body of assessors to, to the right size such such that we can turn things around in the timescales that we're after. Um, but as, as a, a role, the, the assessor is very much a, a mentoring role. It, it is about guiding people and supporting them to, to achieve their, their CPD objectives. And, and picking up on something that Rob Smith uh, commented on, um, CPD is not not just something that that those who are in employment need to do, uh, paid employment need to do. It is anyone who remains active in in an engineering function within their lives, and that may well be in in people's voluntary uh, arena as well. It, you, you may be providing technical knowledge, technical uh, consultancy um, to to. For example, uh, uh, a heritage steam um, uh, organization, in anything where you are using your your engineering knowledge, um, we would recommend that you continue to do CPD. And in most cases, as John says, if you take the 70-20-10 rule, you will actually be doing a fair amount of CPD just inherently by by the the inquisitive nature that is inherent in being an engineer um, and, and looking things up. And this is what we want to, to be pulling out um, in, in our stage one assessments. 
When it comes to the stage two assessments, again, it's still very much a mentoring role. Um, but because we've got the additional detail in, in the submissions that we've asked for, we're now able to, to delve a little bit closer into, into what, what makes sense for, for the individual that we're assessing in terms of their CPD. And we're able to give more tailored advice and recommendations as to what they, they could and should be considering doing. In saying that, what we are not doing as assessors is, is saying you must go and do this CPD. You must have a certain amount of hours uh, of leadership training. That is not what we are saying. And, and indeed, it is probably not right for every individual. It is an individual mix um, uh, uh, of CPD that's appropriate. And you as individuals are the only people that can can really say this is what is right for me at this point in time. Uh, so I was going to move on to, to look at um, the CPD role as a committee member, which I think is the next and the next one on from that. Um, so as, as I alluded at the outset, um, CPD com committee it does not work in a vacuum. We're part of the institution as a whole uh, and essentially our, our uh, terms of reference feed down, flow down fr from the trustee board through the operating boards uh, and a CPD. Um, our, our operating board is the qualifications membership board. Um, but as I said at the outset, you know, my, my volunteering ha has encompassed uh, the regional strategy board and, and being regional chair. Um, it has encompassed uh, the the um, education and skills board uh, as the regional education officer uh, and now as CPD AC, uh, we come under the qualifications and membership. And if you move to the next slide, uh, QMB, which is the short form of uh, qualification and membership board, um, is one of the uh, larger uh, of the structures that we've got. And that's where we bring in um, not only the CPD side of things, but it is also where where uh, people assess uh, the educational institutions uh, uh, and accredit them for to to uh, deliver degrees which are compatible with registration. Uh, it's where we do the the professional reviews and, and take people for, to to their registered statuses. Um, and it brings in things like ethics committee uh, and arbitration. So, so there's a, a large number of, of panels that, that contribute to, to the qualification and membership board. Um, and so as volunteers within, within this sector, what is it that we are fundamentally doing, which is where we move to the next slide, please, Donovan. Um, so, so the, these committees feed in uh, and inform the trustee board uh, and engage with the engineering council to to establish uh, what we need as an institution to be doing uh, and to, to benchmark with the other professional institutions to ensure that what we're doing is consistent and compatible with, with uh, what the engineering council requires and with the other institutions. So CPD was was relatively new. All of the institutions ha had differing views on on how it would come together. Uh, Rob Smith, myself, others ha have engaged with the Engineering Council at various points uh, just to make sure that things are aligned and, and that uh, there, there is a common understanding of, of what constitutes reasonable uh, CPD activity on, on registrants. As well as that, that outward looking side of things, we, we have to make sure that the various constitutions, bylaws and regulations which, which govern the institution, again, are, are consistent with, with our obligations under UK spec to, to the Engineering Council. But also that all our registrants 
have a clear understanding of what our expectations are and what happens if those expectations are not met. And as part of that, we have to develop uh, and promote the, the strategic approach in our case to, to CPD. And we provide oversight and guidance to, to the, the staff to make sure that uh, we do correctly achieve our, our annual audit and to look at what, what uh, the, the audit is telling us in terms of how, uh, how the situation is improving with time, hopefully, um, and are we reasonable to, to expect members to, to be doing various types of CPD, extensive CPD, uh, and ultimately we set the standards and acceptance criteria that, that are applied to, to our membership. Uh, and as part of that process, we, we uh, undergo a, a significant amount of, of um, uh, communication with, with the membership. So, so in the past, hopefully you will have seen various articles in, in uh, the Professional Engineer magazine, um, which set out what, what expectations we have for, C, for CPD and, and showed what, what good looks like. And as part of that process, we're setting the goals um, for the institution for for the future. So in that sense, it, it, this is, is much more uh, looking at um, some of the other leadership skills that, that you would expect to be developing. It is about communications, uh, for sure. Um, it, it is strategic development. It is leadership uh, uh, and guidance. And if we move to the next slide, which is stakeholders. So, so the committee uh, and all the committees, but this is this is our stakeholder map. Um, it is very much a case of, of um, being the focus for for that stakeholder management. Uh, through through what we do, we we have to engage with the various. Uh, balloons that you can see there uh, and make sure that they're, they're all working together in harmony to, to achieve our objectives and, and the Engineering Council's objectives uh, um, for, for what is expected for, for CPD. Um, one thing to, to just note, you, you will see there that we've also got the Society for the Environment. Um, as, as an institution, we, we also um, have chartered environmentalists, incorporating environmentalists um, and environmental technicians. And as such, the Society for the Environment also has requirements on, on CPD activity. Fortunately, the Engineering Councils and the Society for the Environment's requirements are very closely aligned. In, indeed, they are pretty much identical with, with the one um, slight subtlety that Society for the Environment requires and expects that, that CPD has an element of, of um, sustainability and environmental protection um, learning associated with it. But other than that, in terms of the, the quantities and, and uh, remits of, of CPD, they, they are very closely aligned. And if we move to the next. So, yeah, just to summarise on, on the committee, um, it, it's very much a, a strategic direction uh, and oversight. Um, it is all about stakeholder management, both internal within the IMEC uh, and external, both the, the governing bodies side of things, but also our customers in this sense. The, the the members who who we are auditing, uh, and as a as a voluntary activity, it, it's very much about developing and uh, and uh, progressing leadership and interpersonal skills. As with the the um, assessor roles, it does have an element of, of mentoring about it. In, in so far as we we are setting the the uh, the goals uh, and the success criteria. Uh, and it's important to to state that that what we're doing is supporting. It is not policing. We we are not here to to 
sanction members unless we absolutely have to. And as I said at the outset, you know, sanctions only come in when when people refuse to engage with us. And you know, we we have got a, a fairly extensive program that we've set up to try try and cajole, cajole people who have chosen not to engage to get them to to a point where they're engaging. So so it, you know, the 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 sanction. Uh, and as I said, it could could lead to to people losing their their registration status. Is seen very much as being the the last last resort when, when all other routes have failed. In terms of committee um, commitments, our committee and and indeed most of them are similar uh, are around eight to twelve um, members of any uh, registrant grade. Um, in, indeed, for for, um, for committees like like CPDAC, um, I would be very keen to bring on uh, members who who are uh, in in incorporated or or engineering technician grades because we are lacking that that element of, of um, registrant in in our committee at the moment. So so I'm looking to to bring people in. Uh, from from the incorporated and EngTech levels. We have three meetings per year, um, and depending on what role you are in, there may be additional meetings that that are called for. Um, so so as as chair of the committee, I, I attend the qualification and membership board. Um, we we have there there is an annual workshop with with the engineering council and and a member from the committee will will tend to to go to that. Um, and as committee members, we are also uh, by definition assessors, and several of us are, are the lead assessors who who can take on the the stage two assessments. Um, and and as assessors, as committee members. There, there is uh, training that we provide to, to make sure that people are, are approaching their assessments and the role consistently. Um, so I think that takes us to the next slide, please. And this is where um, we'll, we'll sort of open things out a bit more, uh, uh, go, go a bit bit off from the slides what what do what is it that we get out of uh, out of volunteering um as as we said all the way along ultimately it does reflect all of the the various competencies in in one way or another uh, and this is where it's important that that your reflection on, on what you're doing highlights what it is that 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 particular uh, element of volunteering ha has brought to you um and and it will differ the same the same activity may may well bring different different levels of, of uh, uh, benefit to to different people um from from a personal perspective uh, uh, and uh, looking at um the the roles the the competencies in in sequence um competence a which is um on, on the uh technical knowledge front. Um, one, one of the things that I found very interesting, pro probably decidedly um, commercially wrong, um, members sometimes put a lot more information into their CPD record th than I think their, their commercial managers would, would uh, appreciate. Um, but actually, there are sometimes some really interesting bits of, of uh, technical report, photographs, whatever that are added to, to the records. And, and they lead me, at least, to, to, to go and do my own research on, on topics that they've raised. So as a means of, of identifying interesting areas to, to look into, um, it, it is decidedly um, beneficial uh, as i say may, may, maybe the owners of ip and and, and uh, commercial managers might might be a little bit more reticent about it but but it does does work and is is really good 
Um, looking beyond that, it, it obviously is is a strategic role, and and therefore um, it, it brings in the the leadership skills. Uh, it, it is about running a committee, making sure that it it is meeting all of the all of the requirements. Um, in terms of looking at competence B, which is more about um, contributing to journals, presenting at technical events. Well, you know, clearly John and I are presenting to, tonight on on what we've done as as the committee members, um, but. By and large, you know, we we are having to talk to to members in our own workplaces. Uh, so I regularly talk to to graduate engineers joining our company um, about what what their expectations are, how they will move from from graduate membership levels through to to um, the registered grades, um, and, and so it's supporting uh, supporting my intakes of uh, engineers to, to, to achieve their goals. Um, and as, as I've said, you know, it's part, partly a mentoring role. So, so you know, there, there are elements of CPD competence B that, that come in. Um, competency C is, is where we're looking at um, that, that has as one of its uh, areas chairing an institu institution committee, chairing or, or being a member of. Um, so, so instantly you, you've got credibility un, under cons, competence C. Um, some of the other committee roles, you know, clearly uh, treasurer uh, of uh, of a region or, or or one of the other groupings. We'll, we'll have the budget responsibilities and all of these things when when you're doing it through through the voluntary route and and through as a committee route um clearly it is not part of your work and and therefore it's a, a very benign way of, of gaining the skills um it, it, in essence you have the opportunity to to learn without potentially um having an adverse effect on on your real career. Uh, so so getting engaged with with committees and and, and voluntary activity for, from an early start is uh, exceedingly useful as, as a way of learning the trade before you come to that come to to actually need to apply it in in the workplace. Uh, competence D. Um, Well, uh, yeah, uh, and you know what, what we've got in here is carrying out professional review interviews. Well, similarly, uh, the audits will, will come under there. Um, it, again, it, coaching your staff at work. So, so again, you can you can take you can, you can show that that your voluntary activity uh, ha has relevance in in competence D. And finally, at E. Which again is mentoring. Um, so STEM ambassador activities come under competency. Um, so again, here you can show or, or, or adapt your your activities as, as a volunteer into in, into competency. So so as a means of, of demonstrating the various competencies and and taking yourself from from the membership grades. Uh, EngTech Incorporated, Chartered, Member, Fellow. Uh, it it all helps to to demonstrate that. Um, other other benefits of volunteering, um, certainly when it when you're involved in in the education side of things, um, that is where it becomes very rewarding when when you see kids uh, of various ages engaging with with stem activities engaging with with science um uh, and uh, you you can see kids who who maybe the first time you you met them sit there and and say that that 
they don't do science, it's got no relevance to them. And, and you start to explain where, where the science comes in and how it how it all fits together and how, how life does revolve around science, whether you, whether you like it or not. Um, and uh, understanding elements of the science at the end of the day enables you to to live cheaper, better, um, by, by being able to do some things for, for yourself uh, and seeing kids who, who go from from that initial I don't do it to, to actually engaging with with the science uh, uh, and taking an interest in it uh, I personally find exceedingly rewarding um, I do less of that these days because I'm more organizing events and, and with with my role as chair of, of governors um, you know I have a lot of the the more strategic elements to come in, but if, even there, it, 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 uh, despite occasionally uh, things being decidedly uncomfortable, um, you know, no one, no one likes going through uh, the the exclusion process. Um, but even there, it, it, it is still really interesting. You, you have to, to do your CPD in terms of understanding what what the law requires, setting out a business case for, for why it is unacceptable for, for us to be continuing to use temporary buildings some, some 30, 40 years after they were put into, into place, um, and setting the business case to, to the education authority as to why it's a basic needs uh, requirement for us to have a new building. Um, as part of that building, understanding what what is needed in the classroom uh, and how how the education requirements sit and therefore what what do we need to put into that classroom and it's it's all learning and, and whilst at a, a superficial level it may not appear to be relevant to, to the day job actually you find that that there is a cross correlation between what you do as a day job and, and your voluntary activity just because it is the sort of thing which carries on to, to be seen throughout work. Um, so, so I do safety and risk as, as the day job. Um, I do safety in the schools. What I see as safety in, in an oil and gas or a nuclear context is very different from the safety that I see as, as school. But, but by the same token, being able to turn around and, and talk about Legionella at work has, has been beneficial. Uh, so, so you know, I learn from from both my voluntary activity and my work activity, and I'm able to bring that knowledge and competence to to both both arenas. John, is there anything you wanted to add in terms of benefits? I, th I think for me, uh, one of the things is um, it, it just gives me a wide perspective of the activities that, that members are involved in. Uh, and, and I find that quite fascinating. And as, as you say, some things will pique your interest and you'll just go down rabbit holes. Um, the other thing I I just like personally, I, I've been involved as a mentor within my own organisation's uh, engineering training schemes for 30 odd years now. And I just see helping people to to get the most out of their career and to really actually get them thinking about what it is into what skills and knowledge they have and how they can develop those in order to real uh, get where they want to go i just find that in immensely rewarding and this this is uh, a another part of that i think i think the other thing i would say um for anybody who's thinking about being an assessor, um, it, it, you can, um, a typical record will take between 20 and 48 minutes to review, um, depending on how much is, is, is in it. Um, generally, we, we ask, uh, they're allocated in batches of tip up to 10, and we normally uh, ask that you you go through that batch within two to three weeks, um, so, uh, but ultimately you control how much you give. Um, there is, if, if you're unable to do something, just let people know. Um, and 
that'll be fine that's fine you know if you can only do 10 you can only do 10 and that that's a great help to us all um and i, I would say also that um the imac e staff chris chris and natasha are very um supportive and able to either help you directly or input, put you in touch with alex or myself who can also help so um you're not left on your own if, if you do become an assessor and indeed the tr same is true if, if if you have any questions on on cpd at any point you know, outside of, of this meeting get getting in touch with with the headquarters staff they, they will put you in touch with with ourselves if if, if they can't answer the question directly um so, so you know there is always a means of, of getting ad advice on on cpd So I open the, the floor to any other questions that people may have. I think uh, one other thing I, I would add is that what we we also as a committee, we run um, or we're looking to run an annual workshop for the assessors. I think we did uh, the first one internally to the committee last year and we're doing the next one uh, for, for all the assessors next month. And I, th I think the first thing to say is that um, there is no one right answer. So, you know, it, it isn't a case of you've got to find the ideal answer. It is are you in the right ball to park? What is the feeling? And just be encouraging and um, encourage people to engage and do the, to understand what CPD is and to record it. It is um, really at the heart of being an assessor. You mind if I just add something, Alex? Yeah. Um. So, for those of you who may know me, I've been around for a while, and I previously used to work with Alex and the CPD assessors and the committee on CPD, um, especially for those early years of audit, um, which definitely left, left a mark. But what I would say is, I think feedback from assessors was really, really interesting because they had so much to get through back then when we had fewer of them. But I think a lot, one of those definite hooks was the enjoyment of actually seeing what other engineers are doing, um, looking at those records that get submitted um, and, you know, getting a look at what's happening on the other side of that wall um, in different industries. We don't industry match um, when it comes to allocating assessors, records, etc. So it's really a mixed bag that you'd get. Um, and there's definitely some satisfaction and enjoyment to get out of that, um, which I'd I'd encourage people to think about um, if you are thinking about becoming an assessor. Um, just having a look then, we've had a couple of yeah. comments come through. I'm yeah. not sure if they're questions. Yeah, yeah, there's some questions there, so I'll I'll pick those up. Um, so so, um, what what do we expect in in the term in terms of reflection uh, uh, and how it's how it's uh, managed? Um, Reflection at the end of the day is is very much up to you. Um, there there will be situations where where um, you know you you do need to keep your reflections to to yourself. You know if if you've attended a seminar and and identified that there is this fantastic commercial opportunity by by moving this technology into this arena, um, I'd suggest about the last thing you want to do is is to to tell. All and sundry, and and your, your auditor, um, yeah, this this wonderful breakthrough that you've just made. Um, so so we don't expect to to see um, chapter and verse. Um, I tend to to recommend that people just put put some bullet points down, um, and yeah, you know, whether whether we as an auditor see see that, um, you know, you you can. Um, redact your your submission to us per perfectly legitimately um 
you know, just just tell us that there, there was, you know, something really useful there. Um, we we like to to see where where people have said, you know, I attended attended this this lecture, and as a result, I've done some further research, read this book, or I need to read this book. Um, you know, what, whatever it might be. So so explaining how you you've uh, taken taken what you've learned and and moved it on to to your your own particular application and industry. Um, so, so we don't expect it to be vast amounts. Um, bullet points is absolutely fine. Uh, a couple of sentences, um, and, and it is in in the typical way. It is very much about what went well and what what didn't go so well. Um, so, so you know, just try and and really give yourself the notes. Um, and and the space to think through what was what I have just done useful and and we recommend that it happens you you do your reflection for for each activity. Um, there's another question which asks uh, how how we would um, how we want the recording of, of CPD any any mechanism that you are comfortable with is absolutely fine we couldn't care less how you you record it as long as it is recorded and in a means that you can submit it to to us for audit should should the need arise um yes there is the the um career developer tool on on the website um that's daughter number two phoning um uh, so so we can we can take it in any form. There is the developer on the website, um, and we've also introduced a an Excel spreadsheet tool. A, num a number of people were, were putting in um, Excel versions of their CPD logs. Uh, personally, uh, as someone who, who does Excel spreadsheets as, as part of a living, um, you know, I, I'm very much a, an Excel addict. Uh, and so I keep mine on on the CPD tool, uh, Excel spreadsheet. You can download that uh, a version of that from the website. But if you have your own and prefer to use your own, then by all means do that. Um, as as I was instrumental in writing the one on the website, you know I won't take offence. Um, in there's a question of, of um, where where. Where you're doing your CPD um, as as a matter of interest, uh, and the the ex example cited w w was uh, modern railways. Um, you know, if if you've read an article and and there is an element of, of it that you has piqued your interest, you know, just flag that that was something that you noted. If it, if it is something that you can apply to to your industry, your sector, your business, th then again note that that's what you saw um and and that really is is sort of what we'd expect from from the reflection it does not have to be much more than that um and, and in terms of the article you know, the, you know the, it's a monthly magazine so so there are multiple uh, bits of interest in there um just flag up the ones that that are, are most interesting and, and mostly to to uh, your uh, benefit to to your career. Um, just trying to flag through what else does the person does the person being audited find out who their assessor is? Uh, no, is, is the short answer to that. Um, it, it's done anonymous, uh, anonymously. Anonymously, um, as assessors. We do see the name, which, which uh, does mean that that um, should it, should it be someone that we we know for for various reasons, um, they, then we can claim a conflict and, and pass it on to one of the other assessors. Just keep, keeps life easier that way. But by and large, we're not not doing anything that that is uh, con controversial or. or, or um, so, so there's not a great deal of need for that, but but no, people don't know who who our assessor is, and and even on the stage two assessments, the the more detailed assessments, we we don't um, 
allow people to, to know who, who their assessor has been. The only difference with, with stage two is that we've we've in, instituted um, a second assessor to, to peer review the first assessor's uh, comments just to make sure that uh, the, the response is, is appropriate. So, so the first assessor make, makes the, the first uh, pass at the, the feedback. And then the second assessor just confirms that it's all uh, fit and dandy. Um, on the stage ones, uh, the assessors do do the assessment, and and then it's the staff that that just do a a quick check to to make sure we haven't said anything too rude when when someone says uh, I don't do CPD. We we, we leave that that uh, that piece of kicking to 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 the staff. Um, and uh, you know, I, I see the comment there about uh, uh, you know, I hope I hope what we've said ha has uh, prompted prompted various of you to to think about becoming um, involved with 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 regions with, with committees wh whichever and wherever uh, and indeed you know internal or, or external. I, I hope that there's reason for you to, to engage in the voluntary sector. I think that's, that's... I know we're over time, but there's a final question from Andy Roberts about CPD uploading and what can and cannot be seen, which might be useful to know, Alex. Uh, yeah. Um, in, anything that you can upload to, to a website in, in the normal sort of way. So Word documents, Excel documents, PDF documents. Um, I assume PowerPoints will work. I've, I've not seen any PowerPoints come through, but but anything that... Yeah. that um, they do work, I've seen them. Right. Uh, so so any, anything that, that constitutes the normal range of, of um, uh, native files we, we can can handle. Um, I, I think you can you can upload anything with it within reason to 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 the your your, um, your vault in in career developer. Um, I would just make the plea don't 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 feed us too much information because uh, it makes the assessments take longer because some some of the information that people send, as I said earlier, is exceedingly interesting and, and distracts me. Um, and you know, I have seen people sending through photographs of, of uh, incidents that they were involved in the forensics of. Well, personally, uh, that is fascinating territory, uh, and uh, you know, I, I enjoy that side of things. But but I really shouldn't be seeing that. And I've seen sketches and drawings sent through which, which again we probably should not be seeing so so you know do do think you know at the end of the day we're assessors we are professional engineers working for for a living there there is a fair chance there is a reasonable chance that that uh, your your assessment will go to to an engineer who is working in an allied um company uh, and therefore, don't send anything that you wouldn't send to to uh, you know your your non work peers is all I would say. Uh, please send the link for the spreadsheet. Um, I can't. Have you got that, Donovan? Are you deep That's deep? done that. Um, okay. It is within Career Developer, so you will need to, your login. But if you click the link to CPD Tools I've just shared, it'll ask you to log in, and then you'll be able to navigate and find that download there. But as I said, in any format is perfectly acceptable. So I think that brings us to a close, doesn't it?
yeah, no more questions I can see. Um, so yeah, I think we've just run slightly over time, but um, as you say, we will share the slides um, and I'll over to you, Alex, for closing comments. Well, th thank you very much all for, for joining in. I hope it's been useful. Um, as I said, I, I hope it's encouraged some of you to, to take on um, you know, uh, a role either within the institution or, or any other uh, voluntary area. Um, as I said at, at the outset, I, I unashamedly um, described in, in the context of CPD Assessment Committee uh, and uh, you know, we we are on the lookout for for other people to join the assessor panel. So so if anyone's been encouraged to to come our way, please please let Donovan know, and uh, we will be glad to to bite your arm off. So thank you very much, and have an enjoyable evening. Thank you, Alex and John.